Hello, my front end friends. If you're anything like me, when you're using Flexbox, you often mix up your align items and your justify content, and it can be frustrating to know which one to use when, but there's actually some pretty good mental models that you can use about knowing which one to pick in the right time, or uh, little tricks to have a mental model, I guess I should say, that we're gonna be exploring right now in this video, as well as a few other little tips and tricks along the way with Flexbox as well. So you can see I have my uh, parent here with the display of Flex on there. If we turn that off, they just, stack on top of each other as regular block level elements, nothing too uh, fancy. And my shortcuts aren't working, so we'll do this the hard way and turn that back on to have my display flex. And first of all, they are stretching as well, so they're hitting the min height that I have set here on the parent, which is causing them to stretch out just for the simple visualization that we're doing right now. Uh, and the other thing, before we get into sort of this mental model uh, that I was mentioning, if you go into your dev tools, uh, and it seems to be every time I talk about this, people get a little surprised, and they don't realize it, but if you go on whatever has the display flex on it, you'll get this little pill that shows you the flexy stuff going on. So we see the empty space, we see the gaps that are in there. And then I also get this little tag down here where my display flex is on the parent. And if I do that, I get this really cool visualization that just helps me out. Uh, right now, uh, the align content is at the top, I guess, because it's in it's not even alphabetical order. I don't know why they chose this. Um, but anyway, you can click these things to like move stuff around and change them or turn them off. And then you'll see what the default values are for all of them, uh, which can be useful. Align content is that one that you barely ever use, but sometimes it can be useful. So we will talk about align content near the end, uh, but just really fast from my alignment, we can see that I can align them centered or I can align them to the top or I can justify them and align them or do different stuff. And you can play around with this, which can be really useful just in quickly, like if you're getting frustrated and you don't know why it's not doing what you want it to do, you can come here uh, and play around with it a little bit. I would say is don't copy and paste once you get something that actually works. <laughs> Instead of copying and pasting, what I would do is actually uh, write in the code afterward just so it helps you remember what you're doing along the way. But it's also one of those things a little bit, it's like margin and padding that I always say for beginners, try one if it doesn't work, try the other. And over time it should hopefully sink in. Though of course the problem with Flexbox is you can change the flex direction which sort of makes things a little bit more uh, easy to mix up. But what we're gonna do, let's reset this. So I'm just gonna refresh my code pen here to go back to the original uh, that we had where it's set up with a display flex, my min height and nothing else going on. And what we're gonna do is turn on these visuals that are right here just to help us visualize the main axis and our cross axis that we have right there. And the main axis just goes left to right as a default. And my cross axis is the up and down. So my items are stretching this way and they're aligned to the start uh, along the main axis. And this is where that mental model can sort of come in a little bit. And I think I got this from Josh Como, who knows how to teach CSS as well. Uh, and so if it was from Josh, thank you. Um, I might be misremembering that and I apologize if it was someone else uh, who talked about this. But let's start by talking about the justify content. Justify content. And first of all, the word content there gives you a bit of an idea of we're grabbing all of the content. So you're just grabbing everything sort of as one bunch of stuff, you could say. it's. It's one net that's sort of grouping everything together. And then we can choose what we're doing with that content. So let's say we wanna do center. And it's going to center that content along the main axis. So from left to right, we're centering it there. That's not too complicated. But let's say we did a one of the ones that space, uh, we'll do a space between, uh, why not? So it spaces them all out and adds that empty space in between each one of them. And it's doing that along this axis that's right here, along that main axis. This is really important because we actually have space that we can put in between them. Let's open up those dev tools again really fast here. And we're just gonna turn back on that visualizer and you can see all of that empty space there. If we don't have that justify content, let's just turn that one back off for a second. You can see that we have all that empty space over here. So all that justify content space between is doing when we turn it on, and if we highlight it here, it's showing us that it's distributing that space equally between them. If ever you're doing something where you're doing a space between, space around, any of those things, it wouldn't really make sense to do this on the cross axis, right? Because let's, you know, try and visualize that. Let's say we come here, let's, uh, we'll turn that back on. Let's close down our dev tools uh, again here. And let's say we do an align, align uh, items, align items of center. And if we align our items center, it's aligning them in the center of this up and down axis this way, right? But we're now using the items word. So it's like we're, we're taking each item and we're moving them individually into the center up and down. We're not treating them as a big group anymore. We're, we're sort of grabbing each of those items and putting them where we need them to be. 
because we can't move the content in the same way this way, right? If we wanted to do an align items space between, but it's space, you know, on this axis here, there, there is no space between them. The space between is only along the main axis and not along the vertical axis. So this doesn't really make sense. So center this way, we're centering it along this way and they're sort of centered along with themselves, right? If I take one of these items and I make it bigger, we're still centering this individual item along this axis. It's not really paying attention to what the other items are doing. It's just taking that individual item, centering it, individual item, centering it, one after the other after the other, which is why we can do something like this. Let's grab this. We're gonna make this one here our blue color. Uh, we'll make that our third one. And let's make this one 200 pixels. And that's why we can do an align self of start because I can take that and I can move it to the start on its own because the items here is always looking at the individual items and how they're aligning on that cross axis. Whereas you know, people always wonder why can't we have a justify self, but how could we justify self of start or end when the justify it's looking at the group of content along this axis. Like if I did a justify self of start, where would it go? Would it move all the way over here? It doesn't really make sense because there's these other elements that it's sharing along that axis, along the, the justify axis that we have available to us. So when we do that, it doesn't really make sense anymore. But aligning the items, again, it's just align self is I can move this one thing all by itself or align items is just saying all of you on your own, don't pay attention to what the other ones are doing. Just go in the center along that cross axis. And of course, what we can do is we can come here and we can actually say flex direction is column, which is going to change everything. It's going to move those all around because what that's actually doing is switching those axes around as well. And right now this, this min height's actually becoming a little problematic. So we'll do that just so we can uh, get the fourth one down there. And once again, if we think about it, we're saying I want to align myself. So the third item to the start, and again, align is the cross axis. So by having switched uh, our flex direction, we're switching the cross axis, right? We, we turned this to go this way instead. And so because we've turned that, it can go to the start along the cross axis. Or I could say that you're actually gonna go to the end on the cross axis and it's gonna move it to the end instead. And then we can take number two here. And let's just say we come here and we add some content. Two has more content. Once we've done that, it's not paying attention to what the other elements are doing. It's just centering itself along that main axis, even though it's just aligned items. It's just doing it to each individual one because it can do it that way. Whereas my justify content right now is still doing a space between. So there is some extra space that it can put in between each one of those. Cause again, it's grouping them all and then spreading them all out. So then we could put this as a center instead. And then it's taking all those items and centering them along that main axis. And my visuals are a little broken cause I didn't make it very well uh, to go to these larger <laughs> sizes, obviously. Um, but I think it gives you an idea of sort of what we're talking about here and how it's moving around on these different axes. So let's actually go back and switch this flex direction back around and we can turn that off. Uh, and what we're gonna do is actually come in and add a few more items here. So we have eight items now and you can actually see we've run into a problem where we have some overflow. Um, just for those visuals I had, I turned off my overflows because they were gonna stick out the ends if not. Um, so you can see though that they would be overflowing. We just have an overflow hidden so they can't. So one common thing that we'll do is a flex wrap of wrap, which will stop them from overflowing and it's actually gonna wrap the items down. And as they continue to run out of space, they continue to sort of do this type of thing, right? Uh, and that's where we have the final property they can come in, which is the align content. Again, we just have to make that thing of align items is grabbing each individual item. Justify content is grabbing all the content and moving it around sort of as a group on that main axis. And so align content, the align word is still sort of saying cross axis to us. And what it's doing now is it's grabbing all of the content and it's gonna move it along that cross axis. And just really quickly before I show the example of how that's going to work, if you are learning something from this video and you wanna learn more about Flexbox, I do actually have a course that deep dives this topic in a lot of detail, including some actual examples that you could use in real world project, including looking at more real world examples than just sort of silly demos like this, where we have some visuals. We start with the visuals, move into the actual more real world projects. I leave you some patterns that you can reuse over and over in your projects. 
uh, along the way and it just we really break down Flexbox and make sure that you really understand how it's working so you can take the most advantage of it in your day-to-day -day work. So if you're interested in that, it's flexboxsimplified.com and if not, you can just keep on watching this video where we'll look at our Align content now. Uh, so let's do that, Align content and we'll do a center and for that I am going to once again make this a little bit bigger. Let's bump that up to 800 once again. And let's turn that off for a second and see what's happening. Where by default, we're gonna do a few things here actually. Let's turn off the align items. And by default, they wanna stretch. And so this is in a row of content and this is sort of an, a second row of content. So they're just taking up basically 50% of the parent's height total. A lot of the time you're not gonna have a height on the parent. It'd be the different children creating the height. And then the elements might have varying sizes. So they'll be centering uh, or stretching depending on what's going on. Uh, along your individual axes here. So these stretches are working and then we have sort of, you know, our align um, uh, self end here is pushing that one down to the end and a few different things that are going on. But by default, they wanna stretch and they just wanna take up the available space that's there. And so if we do on all of them an align item center, which is always what we start with, we go, I wanna take my items and center them. Each one of those rows has its own cross axis that we're centering on now. So this is centering in that bigger space that it had available, and these are centering in that bigger space that it had available to it. So each row is centering its items there, which is often not what we want. And this is, again, where you go, oh man, that's not, this is frustrating, it's annoying. Uh, and it is, sometimes <laughs> you do that and you go, oh yeah, I needed the content instead. So you just come here and you switch that from align items to align content, where now we're looking at the, the main crocs, cross axis for this entire element, we're saying, take the content, everything, just like we were justifying it before around that way, we're justifying the content, we're grouping it all, we're moving it. You can do an align content and center and it's taking all that content and centering it. Or you do your align content and, and it moves it all the way down. Except in this case, we are in code pen, so we want a flex end. Uh, or we can do the start and it, again, it has to be a flex start, uh, old habits die hard there and it pushes everything up over to the top. And one thing I did mention along the way here too is that we had the uh, alignment that I was talking about. Uh, and I said, we can't do a justify self because justify self really doesn't make sense. But you might be saying, I wanna take this eighth item here and actually push it all the way to the end. And that's usually when someone's thinking, I wanna justify self something, that's what they're thinking. Or maybe I want this fifth one to line up here and these other ones to stay there, something like that. Uh, and there is a trick that you can use for this, but it's not about justification. Cause again, justifying content along there, it just justifying items doesn't make sense the, with the way that that axis works, uh, right? But what we can do is let's grab that eighth one. I'm just gonna copy this really fast. We can come down here and this is a little bonus tip that I snuck at the end for people that actually watch the entire video, so I do appreciate it and give you a little extra content. Uh, we can just say margin left of auto and like magic, it's gonna push itself all the way over to the end there. Now, what you might wanted is to have kept this part centered, uh, but because what's happening is the margin left auto is basically taking all of that empty space. You've done this before, right? Margin left, margin right auto, and it centered something. You can do this on anything and it's gonna push the thing all the way to the right side because it's adding all the empty space to the left. So then what we could actually do is do the same thing, but on the fifth one and do this as a margin right. And now we're distributing the, uh, oh, margin, <laughs> margin right uh, left auto actually on that one as well. Uh, sorry, I was mixing myself up. So now we're taking some of the space and putting it there and the other half of the space is going here. It's automatically distributing the space in between them uh, and you can sort of have some really interesting things come up by playing around with your margin autos left and right when you're using them in conjunction with Flexbox, uh, depending of course on what you're trying to do. I would that sort of I would use my Flexboxy stuff first and then come to this stuff at the end. And then if you need to move something along the main axis, that's where your margins do come into play. And so yeah, if you do want to unlock more of Flexbox, you feel like there's a lot more you could learn from it, Flexbox Simplified, the link for it is in the description below. And with that, I'd really like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my patrons and channel members for their continuing support. And with that, thank you very much for listening. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more. Awesome.